calves can't follow their mothers on deep dives. Kiraki was often left at the surface with a babysitter when his mother and the rest of the group coordinated a feeding dive. The newborn kept track of her by listening for her echolocation clicks from the surface. When she returned, the calf was hungry and eager to nurse. Nursing in sperm whales is poorly understood, so we decided to stay with the family for a few days in the hopes of observing this behaviour. Alexandros and Chris slowly slipped into the water and joined the group beneath the waves. Moving towards its mother, they filmed what appeared to be Karaki attempting to nurse. The expedition continued further south along the Hellenic Trench. The Hellenic Trench is a narrow, steep depression in the sea floor that runs parallel to the western and southern coasts of Greece. We're drifting above the Hellenic Trench. This is the deepest part of the Mediterranean Sea and it's perfect habitat for sperm whales. We've got a group of 14 animals off the bow right now. According to Alexandros, this 600 kilometre long trench is home to 20 families, comprising an estimated 180 sperm whales. This probably constitutes the highest density of sperm whales throughout the entire Mediterranean. Occasionally, we came into port for the night. The coast is dotted with natural harbours and tiny villages where traditional fishing boats and striking whitewashed buildings hug the shoreline. We head out to sea from Lutro on a beautiful calm morning. We followed the trench as it wrapped around the southern coast of the island of Crete. Despite the numbers of animals we've seen on this expedition, sperm whale ecology in the Mediterranean is still poorly understood. After years of research, Alexandros and his team are only beginning to understand these animals. But time may be running out. People in Greece that didn't know that sperm whales occur in our waters may think these are many animals, but biologically speaking, this is nothing. These are too few animals. A so small population unit may disappear even for natural causes just like this. Now imagine that these whales are facing many serious threats. With few natural predators, their greatest threat comes from human pressures. It was one of the tragic examples of pollution with plastic debris. Last year we found a very young sperm whale, 2.5 years old, in the famous Mykonos Island. And when we opened the stomach little by little, we discovered that there were, it was plenty of plastic bags and any other kind of plastic uh, debris that were compacted like stones. And we found at least 100 plastic bags or pieces of nets, any kind of plastic bags for uh, potato, for chips, uh, for uh, chocolates, for, from the supermarket, from whatever all our civilization was in the stomach of this sperm whale. 30% of the world's shipping traffic occurs in the Mediterranean Sea. In Greek waters, whales are often hit by ships. The Mediterranean suffers the heaviest maritime traffic than any other sea on the globe. About 220,000 vessels are crossing the Mediterranean every year. With more boat traffic, there is more noise underwater. Sperm whales use sound to navigate, communicate and find their prey. Scientists are concerned these abilities may be significantly reduced, masked by growing noise pollution. 
it is amazing. I think that there is no silent oasis anymore anywhere in the Mediterranean for the cetaceans that have to hear all this noise 24 hours per day. By far, the most significant threat to Mediterranean sperm whales is the illegal drift net fishery. In the past three decades, 229 animals were entangled and killed in drift nets. They swim into drifting nets they cannot see. Their bodies become so wrapped up in this monofilament web that they drown. Our feeling is that if all these threats, uh, nothing changed regarding the threats, no protection measures are taken for the Mediterranean sperm whales, during the next decades, the level of the population will fall below a number that would guarantee its survival. <laughs>